Okay, now we're ready to do some decals. Uh, so what I've done with the paint, I uh, needed to put a gloss on it. Uh, the reason I want to do a, definitely do a gloss uh, coat on here, but I know it doesn't look too glossy, bear with me, is because with the um, the swastikas, the naughty crosses, uh, there was a bit of um, a bit of a sheen, and they needed to be put on before some of the, the squiggles were put over. And there's definitely a bit of the carrier film sort of showing. So I'm assuming the rest of the decals would be similar. So I want to try to get a smooth, glossy finish. First of all, done a couple of coats of Super Clear, uh, the MRP. And um, got a real orange peel effect, so I'm not too sure why. But definitely a bit of a orange, but you know, it just wasn't going down smoothly. Um, and a bit rough. I then I tried using a bit of self-leveling thinners on it just I've heard about that that should smooth it off but no still got that um grainy effect so in the end I just uh, went with this just stuck on some of the fl the order floor polish which a couple of years back from Asda and uh, that went on sprayed it with the airbrush in the end I put it on quite thick and ended up just literally just brushing it just to uh, try to get a smoother finish and then um, oh and between those coats I have actually sanded, um, so it's still a bit rough, and still, yeah, not, um, it's still got that orange peel effect, and I'm not too happy with that, I'm hoping that I can at least get the decals on, um, get the decals bedded in, and then mat it back, and uh, do some weathering, and hopefully that should actually hide any sort of silvering, but I've still got that texture on there, no matter what I'm doing, anyway, Let's get on with decals. So we're going to be doing this scheme, and we've got two decal sheets. So we've got one of stencils, and so that's the generic stencils for everything. We've got one for the actual scheme itself. So uh, let's get on and put these in. Uh, one thing I have noticed is uh, one of the I'm not little stencil. You can see it just got sort of kicks back a little bit, a little notch down, which is also how it is on the. Uh, on the instructions, so I don't know why, whether that's meant to be like that or whether that's just an error that's then been transferred onto both of those. But uh, let's get some of these decals on, shouldn't take too long, and uh, let's see what we've got. I'll start with on the wings there. Let's do the underside first. So it actually goes way up. So just to check where these are going to go, they're going to go hard up against a panel line that's running along here, 
and also against that little uh, raised panel there. So that should give us a, quite a good marker for that. Pop on touch the micro set just to help. There we go. Decal has got some carrier film, which is larger than the colour itself, so I can't just put the decal hard up against. The decal is definitely in line with the panel line. Which is not actually square with that, no it's not. square with that panel line, there's a little bit, only a little. Same again for the other side. It does seem as though a little bit of the decal's just broken in there. Fortunately, I can just a little bit of black's just missing there, but I can very, very easily just touch that in. A little, a little bit of black paint on a brush. But you can see definitely got a bit of shine on there. They are. Do seem quite thick. Now, decal number two is the top side of the wing. To be honest, I could. I can actually see the decal. I don't know if you can. No, it's not coming up on the camera, but you can see there's, you can see the texture of the uh, the carrier film. Part of me does think, for convenience, I could just very easily mask those and spray those. But we're here now. Prep the side ones. Twenty-one. 
I think these, I thought these were exactly the same, but one's 13, one's 14. I'm going to keep the number on there because I've just noticed there does seem to be a bit of a, um, they're not printed straight. Oh, oh no, I don't need that, that's fine. That's not good. Unlike these, it's 15 and 21, this 21 does seem to be a little bit of an angle to it. So it should be done. And again, it goes, there's a panel line there. So the So the left part butts up with a panel line. Draw the right panel line. And it is these top wing ones which actually here is where I've got most of the texture from the gloss. proved wrong but these decals are there we go. might be proved wrong but these decals do seem quite thick Hoping they're going to do what Tamiya do. Tamiya decals look thick and horrible when they you're putting them on, and then once they're on and they settle down, they just disappear. Let's get these side crosses on. And that is why I put that in there. I don't know if you saw that, I just knocked it with the thing. If I hadn't been in the tape, that would have gone over. So. Okay, this is interesting. I've just realised that this side one has got the um got the inside of the cross coloured. But obviously it isn't. I'm gonna say that's actually not I'm going to say this is an error on here because the one which has got the white bit, the white under the wings is also bounded on the outside part of it whereas this literally is just the white 
and there's another decal that goes in. Right, okay. So I don't know whether it's expecting me to mask up the dark and then put the white on top. But then they wouldn't have done that because they've done it there. I think someone's just uh, a bit exuberant. Let's see how the others. Yeah, they've done it on all of these. Ooh, let's see. Hmm. 109 up there does. Um, okay, it's, it's too late. I'm going to go for it. Panel line there, that's that panel line. So. I'm just going to have to touch that little bit in, but you see how much I was fighting with that, it just shows how thick that thin transparent layer is. That took a proper battering to get in place there, it just really didn't want to slide over. Just torn at the corner. Right, 
So I'm going to get these 21s on, make sure I get these the right way around because it does seem one seems to be leaning a little. I think both seem to have a lean. We'll put that on. So 13 is on this side. And it looks like the one goes on straight and the two leans forward. But you know they're off next to each other, they do look identical, but they do have an angle to it. But we'll so this is 13, this goes port side. And one is perpendicular or parallel even. A panel line, which is there, that's on. <coughs> and the one touches the top of that panel line there, okay. So maybe you can see that the two just seems to be slightly larger than the one, and the bottom of it is angling down. Oh, that was in the perfect position. really see the, that carrier film, how opaque it is. Right, so now we've got the main markings on. Uh, actually, it's making a little bit more uh, with that with that colour band on there. Right, so I'm just going to pop a few more markings on. Uh, that's the main ones, and then we've got the uh, the stencil. So I'm just going to get the, these on, finish that off. You've seen me sort of do the main ones now, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And then once I've uh, got those on, it's just going to be come back, and I think I'm going to be having a few sessions of painting on the number two, the microsol, which will hopefully break down. We'll see. I mean, it might be like the Tamiya ones, where you think they're going on terribly, and once they're on, they actually look really good. Let's see. Decals went down, to be honest, they were quite thick. Um, it's got a bit of silvering on them, and had to do quite a few applications of the microsol, just to try to, not necessarily get them to bed down, but just to try to get rid of the film. You can still see it a little bit in places, not so much now. And then once that was on there, just to try to lock it in, just used another thing of the um, floor polish. So hopefully that hasn't actually got into um, the finer detail um, on there too much. Next thing is to do weathering, but I was gonna say it has actually, now there is still a little bit of silvering, but not, you've really, you kind of got to look for it. I think the amount of, um, sort of gloss finish that's given is similar to what the silvering was on the decals. So I think we've kind of hidden that away. What I want to do is now knock this back so I can actually go into doing the um, 
the uh, actual weathering. So I um, was going to sort of put a map coat on there, but I've decided I haven't done it for ages. I'm going to use, next thing, I haven't done these for a while, is the Flory washes. Uh, these are uh, water-based, so uh, you've got a whole variety, and I've decided I'm going to go for the the brown. Typically what I tend to use is the grime or the dark dirt. The black can be a little bit too much, but I was thinking with the, um, you've got quite dark colours on the top, light colours on the bottom, you can sort of mix and match, but I was thinking it might be good just to have brown, which hopefully would show on all. Um, the idea is I'm going to put this on and then wipe it off whilst it's still wet. Hopefully that should really only leave the um, the actual uh, the weathering in the main panel line. So it'll be more of a panel line wash. But what I do find is it also helps just to mute the whole thing. So that's the idea. Is I just want to knock it back a little bit so it's not quite as shiny. Uh, I'm not using the, uh, the grime or the dark dirt because hopefully once this is dry, I'll then go in with the oils and then with the oils actually try to... Um, make it a little bit more um uh go for the areas where i can actually then go for the sort of the, the grimy sort of look and uh you know actually sort of point pinpoint areas so the idea with this is i've just put some on the brush and you literally just wipe it all over it can take a little couple of goes just to break the surface tension uh, but it does look shocking when you do it I'm not going to do in the wheel wells because uh, I'd be using oils and stuff just to um, do that separately. This is going on a bit thicker than I'd hoped. It does look daunting when you do it. One thing that I must remember to do is at the same time do the outsides of the gear doors. Really shaking this up, it still seems quite thick. going to do the bottom part for now. slapping it on as you can probably see. Now if you want to go for a real weathered look what you'd do is you'd now leave this to dry. Uh, once it's dry you would then use kitchen paper and you'd wipe it off with the kitchen paper and if you want to go for a real weathered look you'd keep the, weather uh, the, the um, kitchen paper quite dry. What would then happen is um, you're really going to have to scrape it off. I'm just going to leave it so it goes a little bit dry. Just pop some water, just in a little tray here, because I kind of want to use damp. In fact, I'm going to probably be taking off you know, 90 percent or more of what I've put on, which does seem a little bit odd. Actually, let's go straight in. heavy first of all. If anything I kind of want to work it in to the recesses which to be honest were very fine and I am worried with the amounts of uh, varnish 
and sealer that's gone on here as well as paints. Probably not going to actually have uh, too much of those fine rivet details going to be left to take a wash anyway. Okay, so you can see it's actually starting to knock it back a bit. direction of airflow you can now see this is dry you're starting to take it off but critically the little panel hatches those sort of things are starting to just be left so I haven't this is dry at the moment I haven't used the water yet we'll see how it goes but at the same time it's making it a bit mucky because it's leaving it in there it depends how much you're washing it off I should have done one wing at a time, really, just so you could see the difference. It's definitely going to show a lot better on the, the bottom because it's the lighter colour. But hopefully you can see that. We're actually starting to get some panel lines details and actually some of that riveting. It's not really popping, probably so much on the camera, but it's... You, to be honest, you don't want it to really draw the eye too much. It's more of a detail that you just sort of subtly notice. It's more of the texture to it. You know, the rivets on this weren't really sort of like sticking out. So actually, for just a couple of minutes, we're really starting to make some difference on this. So again, on the other side. So this is just going to give the base sort of coat of dirt, grime, mud and general sort of texture to it. Then once this, we're happy with this, we can then go in with oils to sort of like do sort of like, you know, around the ejector ports, areas where more grime would actually build up, more dirt, grime, uh, make it look like an actual worked aircraft the good thing with this stuff as well is if it all goes wrong if you look at it and you go I don't like that I literally could just load up a brush with plain water and just wipe the, you know clean the whole thing off want to do a bit more detail in the wheel wells before I get in and weather them as well and again I'll be using oils for that just to be a bit more finer you know hydraulic leaks especially around the guns that sort of area so I will clean off what we've got in there so giving this a rough clean for now I say it's water based, it's reactivated by water, so what I can do is then get in here, actually um, let's just get a little cotton bud. So it's just little ailerons there. I'm just gonna use a bit of a cotton bud just to get in there. And see I just a little dab of water just to dampen it down and suddenly that bit I couldn't get to wipes straight off. In fact I'll use that just for those bits that just went in there. You can see water just remove that straight away and that's why you don't want to dampen this too much if you can help it if you make it too wet it will just come straight off which is good and actually what I can do a little lick just dampen it a touch and just dry it off again just because there's a bit too much on those rear stabilizers we have left like for example there it's a bit darker you can see that one there that panel line is definitely popping out a lot more and it's probably not going to show on the camera 
but that very, very fine riveting detail, uh, although it feels smooth, it's, yeah, it's just kind of giving it that sort of a, that texture. And I'm glad it's not kind of, I was worried about that orange peel texture. We might be highlighting that more than the riveting detail. But because I did uh, use the, uh, a bit more of the polish on there, the gloss after the decals, it has given it a bit more of a shine. I didn't rub it down, perhaps I should have done, although I wasn't going for a real gloss finish. Dampen cotton bud just in those areas. I mean, the good thing is, is sometimes you don't you want to you don't want to take it all out of those areas because sometimes these are the areas where it's hard to get to with the kitchen towel. But also, those are the areas where the weathering would the dirt and the grime would more naturally build up anyway. front you know where there are actually sort of like the larger panel lines those are really starting to show up now and little hatches which weren't really visible before you had to kind of look for them but now yeah you can see as they catch the light there those are the sort of the main ones but there's um, a lot more other details that you're probably not going to see but I'll take some high-res photos and you should see in the photographs so let's uh, flip it over and we'll uh, do the do the top side. Now this probably won't be as effective as in showing there's actually there's not so much raised detail on there anyway. Of course, most of the access hatches and things are on the bottom, which is on the lighter side. And being the darker colours, however, it will give it all that um, the uh, the same sort of uh, look. 